Generative AI provides massive opportunities for global organizations. And two things we know for sure. Well, one, it's too important to be left to ad hoc usage. And two, there really is no one size fits all approach. So how should IT leaders define their organization's generative AI journey? Well, spoiler alert, IT has to be at the center of everything. Join us now for a special episode of Burning Gen AI Questions, a series led by myself, Sally Eves, where I talk now to Dell's CTO of Dell Digital, Janine Habanovic. And welcome now to how to build a Gen AI strategy that's right for you. And so without further ado, we're live. A warm welcome to the show, Janine. Fantastic to have you here. Thank you very much, Sally. Happy to be here. Oh, thanks so much. And perhaps a great place to start is just to tell us a bit more about yourself, kind of the person behind the tech, if you will, and in particular, your role as CTO of Dell Digital. Sure. Uh, yes, I have been with Dell for just coming up on 10 years. And um, I have the privilege of working for Jen Felch in the uh, Dell Digital organization. Brilliant. And I actually get to do a lot of super interesting things as a CTO in that organization, um, namely around we've been the organization responsible for driving the DevOps practice. Um, we have the automation uh platform and COE. So, you know, the traditional automation of last year, uh, we run that. Uh, all the digital workers are run on that platform and uh, the data science experience. So we have a lot of uh, really interesting work. Plus I have the cloud and all the platform work that supports the infrastructure team. So it's a very interesting place to be. I love that real depth and breadth of different experiences there. And I've just brings to the fore the diversity of roles and technology, doesn't it? Another subject I'm sure we might come on to later. But but going back to kind of our main focus today in this series, all about our burning Gen AI questions. I've literally just come from a session actually around AI, generative AI, and particularly in contract management at an event I'm at. And it literally is one of the big talking points of our time, really. What are you seeing from your take in terms of this real kind of acceleration across the world of interest in generative AI? It really is kind of top of mind on organizations' agendas right across the globe. So what's your take on kind of this sudden opportunity? What is it so sudden? Let's drill into that. And what do you think organizations should be thinking about right now to do this in the right way? Yeah, that's an excellent question. It's plaguing every organization that I talk to, which is many. Um, you know, I think just... I would say the gen AI aspect of the explosion was, you know, that came on the scene very quickly. I don't know that we all saw that coming at us from a million miles away. I would, however, say, you know, it is important to kind of look back as you look forward. And it's not like this is really super new. It's just a new wrinkle that is, you know, a little bit of hype, a little bit of hype, but a lot of change. And I, I would say that um, we do see it as a transformational item. Um, uh, like many of the things we've seen over the past, I've been in technology for 30 years. Um, but I do think you should kind of look back, like, look, we were all building on, you know, traditional AI, right? We, we Within our organization, we have hundreds of models that run every single day that help to manage our business. Uh, and I do think, you know, the experience that we have around automation and digital worker platform that we put in place several years ago. Like, I, I think we were kind of prepared for this from a, how do you scale a practice? And, but I do think you have to be extremely thoughtful on this. Um, I think the opportunities are immense, but the need to be focused is equally or more important. Absolutely. And you, I was thinking about this just earlier in terms of things to get right. And part of this is this awareness piece. So, for example, around generative AI, absolutely some amazing tangible opportunities here. But again, it's about the purposeful application of technology. In some cases, you wouldn't need to use generative AI, if you see what I mean. And I think we need to be clear around that in the same way that there's so much focus, for example, on chat GPT. Obviously, there's other alternatives like Arma 2 is one example of that. So, again, supporting organizations and the individuals within to be able to look at these in an insightful, reflective way and really allowing the application of tech to, tech to the purpose you want to apply it to, I think is hugely important here too. So this educational piece about Gen AI, I think is absolutely vital. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. I think that, you know, look, we did a few things right, probably based on our experience with the other technologies. Um, and I would say when this first hit, you know, in, in November, and we were all trying to figure out like, okay, what does this mean for the company? Like, and you know, we're a company that where everybody just kind of runs to it, 
like we run toward um, changes, which is what I do love about Dell. But I think you also have to be uh, very thoughtful in what you're doing because otherwise you can get disparate experiences. You can waste a lot of time and a lot of money if you're not extraordinarily thoughtful. And one of the things that we did right out of the gate, which I think was important, was we um, had established the organization that was doing the Gen AI, we call it the Gen AI Review Board. And that's where we had really put the compliance and the legal and the technology teams together. Even before, this is like going back very much uh, to like March, April timeframe. Because we knew that we had to first, you know, the industry didn't quite know how to respond. We didn't quite know how to respond, but we knew we had a needed a funnel. And then we had identified kind of some four focus areas that we were going to tackle as an organization. And we had run at four, you know, areas because I do think this is about experimentation and practicing and figuring out how to get things right. And I think we started there very early on in the journey. And then we kind of evolved to where we are today, which is, excuse me, we have the four focus areas that we've identified from the top down. We have identified almost 300 use cases that will roll up into those focus areas. And we're prioritizing those use cases with, you know, really the business lens, um, the ROI that's associated with it, the impact of the business. One of the most important things I think, though, that we have to remember is that if you create experiences in disparate parts, you can create a nightmare for your customer, not a great experience. So you have to be thoughtful about how to stitch that together. Absolutely. I think you really need to bring to the fore that that focus really on internal alignment and in particular partnership across the business and IT. And you know, traditionally, we've, we have challenges, for example, around silos. So when we're looking at additional uh, technology like generative AI, again, this thoughtfulness, it couldn't matter more, more strongly, could it? It's absolutely vital. What are you seeing about the power of that partnership and getting better alignment between business and IT to support this? Yeah, we we actually had an existing structure that we were able to leverage um, in terms of transformation. So we were able to quickly engage those same, you know, uh, at an SVP level, the leaders, they were able to help uh, go through the initiatives that were happening within the business units and to really participate in what we now call the community of practice. And that is how we kind of took our use cases and funneled them up. And that's the those are the same 300 I was talking about that we're applying the ROI lens to. And we've also identified, this is an interesting point that we did learn. Um, we did find that in many of the use cases, there were overlapping capabilities. And that's what I mean when I think you're, like it's important to be fast, but it's really important to know exactly what you're doing. And that when you're creating, you know, use the customer at the center and create an experience that is customer focused on what their experience is going to be through the stream. That I think is really going to be important here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And what do you see if you were looking at kind of the unique role perspective of business vis-a-vis IT in this generative AI journey? What would you kind of bring to the fore there as the key roles, responsibilities, et cetera? Well, I think that the for Dell, we really need to have, you know, we have aligned on a couple of points. The first point is that we need consistency in the platforms that this is going to run on. Because I think now you're starting to, you know, sell, you're starting to pick at like the data aspect of it, the privacy aspect of it. And I think it's really important that you have a great understanding as a technology organization of where your models are running, how those models are running and the cost of those models to the business, right? Like you've got to look at all sides of that because that gets down to cost plus where your data is at. So you just have to be really, really um, conscious of of those points, and I think, um, and I think that's something that you know, kind of as we're vetting these ideas and going through the process, that we're doing a pretty decent job on that. But more importantly, we're, we've built a platform. We've used the data science platform that we've run. I think we put that in place in 2018. And we've added GPUs to the data science platform, so we've got a lot of compute capabilities. We've made um, public models available for experimentation. Um, and we've got access to public cloud as it makes sense, especially like open AI, where we're doing more experimentation. Like, I don't think that's the only model, but that's the first model out of the gate. So I would say that we um, have done a pretty good job of identifying what has to happen where it has to happen. And I think now what we're working on is the ROI, the right models, 
in the data problem. Absolutely, absolutely. I was actually attending one of your events just very recently, and it was kind of like a sort of ask the expert kind of kind of vibe um, to this particular one. And again, that drilled into so many areas you were talking about there, particularly sort of four pillars. So kind of AI in was one of them, kind of this embedding and building right across the product range, the AI on aspect as well, really supporting customers, that centricity you mentioned around running their AI workloads, then AI for, which is really focusing, say, more on augmentation and the optimization of processes and decision making and then finally AI with which is very much the ecosystem partnership and again I think that's such a massive opportunity at the moment to really come together but I love there that focus on partnership to really build out and define and offer these general use cases as well so I wanted to bring that to the floor because I thought it was an excellent session and kind of really aligns really well with what you were talking about then of course as well you've got the announcement of uh, Jeff Baudreau for the new uh, chief AI officer role as well so it really is you're really embedded in in, in this world and innovation so I'm loving what I'm seeing there. Fantastic. Yeah, and we're excited about Jeff taking that role. I think he's in a perfect position to um, drive, you know, AI both across the company and within the products. And there's no one better suited to do that. So we're real excited about that, too. Oh, that's fantastic. And and perhaps we can kind of drill in a little bit more about kind of the, the Dell approach, really, uh, kind of that setup I was talking about there. So how are you supporting kind of making this real for, for your team and team members? And I'd love if we could share maybe some lessons learned around some of the implementation work you've been doing. And you know, has anything surprised you? I think it'd be great to share that with the audience today. Yeah, no, it's it's that's a that's I'd be happy to do that. So I think when you kind of step back and you think about the four use cases we identified, I'm going to talk about two of those use cases because they really, really came on the scene very, very quickly. And the first was content. And I think, you know, the way that things kind of unfolded lent itself to, you know, public data. How could you optimize what's happening with the public data? And you don't really have quite as many problems with the public data as you do once you start to get into your own data that your company owns. So I think Content generation and the models around content generation have really gone fast for us. We've engaged, you know, multiple third parties to help us. And we've got a lot that's happening, you know, right now around um, both with our, what content you see publicly, but also what the work we're doing on Dell.com. And you're going to see some things starting to come up in the next couple of, uh, literally the next couple of weeks. So I think that's been an area that's been super um, important and kind of a good place to get experience. But the other place that it has exploded is around um, software development. And it, it's it's actually been pretty interesting for us because we have a very mature DevOps practice. And we've I think we've gotten pretty good at DevOps. We've got so many capabilities available to our developers. We've radically changed that experience over a period of many years. Um, but we were able to actually take um, some of the tools that are out in the industry and just drop them into our DevOps practice, like, and a developer consumes it through their IDE. So it's been a very easy consumption model for our developers. And what we're seeing initial results look promising. I think um, we're trying to figure out how you can attach productivity to it. That's a little elusive, but we do know that it makes our developers much happier in terms of ease of use because it drags a lot of what they were looking for on the internet it puts it right in front of them and it lets them consume that. So I think it's been an easy adoption. We have over 4,000 developers on, um, you know, Copilot today, uh, but we're always, well, always looking for what's the best approach for us. And we'll continue to do that because it's it seems almost every day it changes. So I think lessons learned. We were very focused on a couple of areas early, and I think we're already starting to see results. And if you think about it, Sally, it hasn't been that long. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, so, and the pace that this is changing is pretty, you know, staggering. But I think with the right approach, you can really start to change the way that your business operates. And it's a great partnership between the business and IT. Love that. Absolutely. And that focus there on that continual reflection, I think, so, so important as part of that. And I know we're, we're kind of having kind of a fast, kind of fast LinkedIn live show here. And we've covered a lot already. But as part of our kind of ending of these sessions, we love to kind of focus on some tangible takeaways for the audience to consider now and you know, wherever they are on this journey. Perhaps we could share you know, a couple of nuggets there for people to think about that they could apply like today or tomorrow. And it's really you know accessible and to take action on right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say. Uh... Be absolutely positive here in what you're going to do. Ensure that the ROI for the investment that you make is there, right? This is not just about playing with technology. This is how technology changes your business, right? Make sure your customer's at the center. And I think with respect to the data, you know, 
It's not an insurmountable data problem, but you have to be intentional about the data sets that you're using, your source systems, cataloging that information. So there is an aspect of this that requires you know, you as a technology owner and you as a business owner to really understand those pieces. But if you do that, I honestly believe, you know, I'm not much on hype, but I honestly believe this is one of the biggest pivots that I've seen in my entire career. And I, you know, and look, I worked here, I worked in technology when the internet was launched. So, um, you know, it's been a really long time, and I would say this is probably one of the largest changes that that any of us have seen. I couldn't agree more. And there's that expression, isn't there, about paradigm shifts. And it's one of those that's sometimes overused. But in this particular case, I couldn't agree more. I think we're, we're living in a real moment of time here um, that is exceptional. And I couldn't agree more strongly. And also just to emphasize as well that there isn't a one size fits approach to this. But with all those advice tips, for example, you were just sharing there, there are things that whether you're an organization of any size, you're going to start buying and thinking in the way you were describing there. And there's steps you can take today. So I think that's really, really valuable, Jenny. Thank you very much for sharing that. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, my absolute time. pleasure. Thank you so much. And, and of course, as well, thank you all for watching and tuning in too. We're doing some satellite questions around this series as well. So look out for more on that coming soon as well. We really love to hear from you and your burning Gen AI questions. And we hope this session really helps you as well to think about this in a different way. So thank you all for joining. And we'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening to this episode of Tomorrow's Tech Today. If you enjoy what we're doing, please subscribe to us and leave a review. It really means a lot. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and see more behind the scenes video footage on YouTube. Thanks for listening.